All right, how's things going, you guys? I'm back for another shave today. So it's Monday, January 4th. Um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for this next shave, but I'll actually kind of keep it similar to the last video. Um, a couple of people had made a couple comments being able to see the BBS one and for whatever reason, I wasn't really in the mood to use the carbon today, so I basically just had to kind of figure out what blade I wanted to use in the BBS one. So today, we're going to go with the Timmer blade, so I'll just assemble this real quick, and then we'll talk, talk about brushes. I'm going to be trying out a new brush for the first time on camera for you guys, so Timmer, Solingen. Um, these are the ones that I've mentioned before, I've heard are um, labeled as being ice tempered. So I've got my BBS one top cap, I've got the base plate, and then we have the little plastic washer, and then today we're using the Razor Rock aluminum handle. This is a brand new Timmer, so first shave. Um, I'm going to be using Felche again. So you guys, the two shaves that I did on video here, too many brushes. So I had used this one about a week ago. Didn't load enough. I can't, did I use this with, maybe I used this with Cosmo. I didn't use this with Felche Aromatica, but, um, then I use this with Felce Aromatica, and then you guys, the next day, I use the PAA, the Green Ray. The lather that I was able to get with this is incredible. Super smooth, very creamy, very wet. Um, so I wanted to just touch on a couple things. Most of the Badger brushes that I have um, do not have a glue bump. And what was funny was I had someone, I'm sure some of you guys that are on Instagram, you might get some of the, the Chinese um, brush makers messaging you and just saying kind of what they have to offer and what knots they make and, you know, what badger brushes they're selling. So one of the, uh, one of the people was messaging me and I responded, was kind of asking about their knots and they didn't know what I was talking about when I said, do your guys knots have glue bumps? And they thought I was referring to the glue, pl glue, glue plug. So if you guys notice, I can more or less squeeze my fingers all the way through at the base of this. And it just means that if it doesn't have a glue bump, you have the entire height of the loft that's able to be, it, it just allows for more free, uh, what do they call it, flow through and lather release. Now on this brush, the loft is just a little bit higher. I mean, really not by much. This has, I think, a little bit more of a glue bump in the middle. But this, this has become my favorite synthetic knot. I mean, for many years, this was my favorite. And I know a lot of people strongly dislike this because of how wimpy it is. But at the end of the day, it makes a very, very high quality lather. And this, um, I only knock with this. The glue bump doesn't bother me at all. I just, the handle is not, it doesn't work very well for my hands. I mean, it's not terrible, but um, this year I'd either like to buy a new knot from Douglas or I'll just crack this one and re-knot it. So um, I'm just trying to figure out what brush I wanted to use. I'm not going to use this one today, but I'll use this one soon. This is my largest brush and yeah, it's just, it's sometimes a little too big for me to enjoy. It's a little too luxurious, so to speak. But um, this is an Aka Kappa um, from Italy. Yeah, you guys won't be able to see, but it says Kappa there. Um, this is a great brush. I, I hardly ever use this, so um, I'll show you guys what I'm gonna use. Got a little Papua New Guinea coffee, coffee <laughs> Papua New Guinea coffee in here. So cheers, you guys. So the brush that I'm using today has the most backbone out of any of the brushes that I have. And I got this last month. This was from Phil um, at Bull Goose. 
or this is a shave nook um, brush. This is from Samog, and this is the 2020. Oh man, look at that! Yeah, this is this is a very very stiff brush. Um, anyway, this I don't know if if this is, will be my only shave with it. This has a little bit of a glue bump, so this this has some serious backbone. So even though this is only a 24 or 24 millimeter, I didn't bring my calipers with me. Um, this brush has quite a bit of face feel or presence, I should say. So for a silver tip, I think this is going to be an interesting, interesting little uh, experience because um, most of the brushes that I think I have, I think a lot of people, especially since there's so many of you guys that have a preference for two band brushes, whether it be for the backbone or I don't know, maybe the, there's a lot of different reasons everyone has certain preferences with a certain type of brush. But I think for me, this, this just may be a little bit too firm on the face. So if I don't end up liking this, I may end up selling it, but it's, loading up nice. Um, the reason why I bought this brush was there's not as many, we'll say special edition or limited edition, or just new brushes being released that um, are a little bit more focused on two band and silver tip. And I knew that this one was not going to be like a chemically treated brush. So I wanted to see how this how this would feel, but it's just definitely got a lot more backbone than I prefer. So I'm hoping that I don't over, over exfoliate by face lathering. So um, anyway, I've really been liking this, these shaves that I've been getting with the Felche by Ramatika. So let's see how this brush face lathers. Um, just going to keep the pressure really just at the tips. I'll get some water going in a moment. Okay, a little bit of water. There's very little pressure. There have been a couple brushes off the top of my head that have had more backbone that I really enjoyed, and one was a I think a 26 millimeter knot made by Shave Mac, which is a silver tip DO1. So it was a little bit more of like a pointed bulb. So sometimes the European, you know, like the, the German knot makers, or I, I kind of attribute it similar in some ways to like a Plasson with a taller loft. Sometimes people refer to the Plasson shapes as like a light bulb where they're very rounded um, and also have a, a very tall loft. But this shave mac that I had um, was a little bit more of what I call a pointed bulb. And I didn't think that when I had got that, that I was going to like it. And it was kind of like this. It had a little bit more firmness than it did flexibility in the knot. But I loved the density of it because of what it did to the lather. And so I thought that was a very interesting time at that point for my preference being a little bit more on the softer and more flexible side. When it comes to badger knots, the, uh, you guys can see, I just almost done here with the blue water.
yeah, there's there's a couple two band brushes that you know really stick out in my memory. Um, although I'm not like the biggest fan of Simpsons, and that's not to say that I've had like issues or the ones that I bought I was unhappy with. They just they tend not to be kind of what I prefer in in certain brushes, but I actually really like their Manchurian. Quite a few of their Manchurian brushes. There was um, at a time when they had bought Volfix, or when Volfix bought them, I can't remember. They have a couple releases that are uh, called Simfix, so half Simpson, half Volfix, and there was what was called a, a pearlescent um, Persian jar handle that had um, kind of a less dense. 21 millimeter Manchurian fan, and that was a really killer knot. So I think we're good on the face lathering. So we're going to go with this BBS one across the grain, I'm sorry, against the grain first pass. You guys, I think, saw on that last video the, the first pass going with the grain, and it's it's just like it doesn't pick up quite the same. So my guess is that with my beard, you know, with it laying down or kind of gross, doing this against the grain first pass tends to be quite a bit more efficient. And again, when, when you guys see me doing this, I try to get that blade At a pretty efficient angle, but I'm focusing less on the way that the, the cap is touching the skin, and I try to focus a little bit more of that base plate being in contact. So yeah, that last shave with the BBS one was really, really, really smooth. This is two days worth of beard growth. But see this, um, using this, this brush is a good example of, you know, I could tell you guys, I don't like this brush. It's not good. And that, that would be for the reason like it's it's more stiff it has more backbone than I prefer so this has been mentioned before in some of my videos but I think sometimes a review it, it may get lost you know someone's preferences of what they like in a certain shave item, those kind of reflect upon how they grade, you know, whether something works or not. And so for me to be able to tell you guys that, you know, I'm maybe a little more in the minority. I think a lot of people, like I said, really prefer Brushes that have more backbone, brushes that have a little bit more presence on the face, or maybe they prefer that gel tip sensation. I would never sit here and tell you guys that if you like any of those things that there's something wrong with what you like or that's not what you should like. Maybe the thing for me is if I'm using something that has too much backbone. I feel like it kind of gets in the way of the, the feeling that I I like, and that might be like with a more floppy brush, being able to lather for like three to four minutes without irritating my skin. Um, I'm sure I maybe was still lathering for two to three minutes on on this shave, but I try to separate. 
what I might say are the good and bad things about something with how I like something and whether it fits in my preferences. I try to be more fair with, you know, if I'm going to show something, if it doesn't fit, like, you know, perfectly with something that I like, you know, who is it going to probably be most suitable for? Okay, so did get some nicks. I don't know how easily you guys can see. Yeah, got really good on the neck. Add a little bit of water. See, one pass, this is why I like this razor for such a long time. That one pass would usually be where I would stop with the BBS one and I might follow up with another razor that's a little more mild. So like now, if I were to equate something that I used to use, something that I would use now with something I used to use, the carbon minus plate would be a appropriate follow up. So I think what I'll do is I'll do an across the grain pass and that should be it. Something about a two band brush, I think I don't really care for the, the firmer feel of the individual hairs, whereas like a silver tip, or if you want to just say a three band, I think that there's, there's just like a closer tactile feel to having like the thinner hairs off of a badger pelt move across the skin when you're lathering versus the, the thicker hairs. See, the other thing too is I don't know if this brush, if I were to really give it another good, like very extended amount of lathers, if I would feel like it would feel noticeably softer, more gentle on the skin. I just have a feeling this is this is just more for some of you guys that like a more genuine feeling badger brush, no chemical treatment. Lather's great, it just probably isn't my deal. Okay, so let's go across the grain. That's probably gonna be it. My, my skin honestly is already feeling a little, a little raw. I won't necessarily blame that on the brush. I mean, it very well could be, but um, I've told you guys before the Timmer blade in the BBS one is is very equivalent. Um, it's about as as equal of a pairing in my experience as to, as like a Kai in the other razors. I think this, this offers a good amount of smoothness. smoothness. Last part, lowest part of the jawline, and then that'll be it. All right. Well, 
guess I could just finish with the green right there. Not really picking up too much. So let's just say the next next shave, I'll just use this same trimmer blade and the same BBS one razor. Let's assume that maybe this irritation is from that first against the grain pass. The thing is though, I've done plenty of shaves. I've done more shaves than you guys could imagine doing first pass against the grain. And trust me, I've used I've done that with a lot more hair. I think I was telling JB recently the most, I think, hair that I've done with a first pass against the rain is two and a half weeks. And at that time, I'm pretty sure I did it either with the BBS one or that might have been the R41 years and years ago. So... Let's just throw in some coconut butter real quick. So, this uh, Aka Kappa brush that I was showing you guys, it's it's a pretty big brush. Sometimes uh, I feel like there's not as much fun with using some of these these larger badger brushes or the ones that have a lot of backbone. You only have like a little bit of beard. I kind of feel like it's, I don't know. There's something more to enjoy with them when you're using them on much more beard. I think that's why I've kind of been switching more between some of the badger brushes that I have and then using the, the synthetic brushes. Um, very frequently in between, I might switch from one badger brush, next shave, use a synthetic, and then switch to another badger brush. So, anyway, since I'm doing more of the daily shaves, I just think about, like, again, what's, what's usually the, if there is a limit for my skin, that's probably going to be the most suitable thing that I could try and use. So, just tell me, it's it's a close shave. I mean, again, the Nicks, I didn't get those last time. I was also using a Gillette Ruby blade. And I guess, yeah, why not? So I do have this. I'm gonna hold off on using this today. I did spray on the Fougere Aromatique. If I were to, I don't know, this is probably gonna last me for maybe another couple years. I don't know how fast I'll go through it. But I will tell you guys, I think that um, with my kind of appreciation for Will's different scents, I know that he has Fougère, Angelique, Fougère, uh, what's the other one? Angelique, Gothique. Um, I would probably buy samples of those when I run out of this, um, just to kind of see how I like those scents. I've heard very good things about both of them. So I'm using the Fougère or the Felce Aromatica aftershave. There's some burn. So, how is this brush? It's a great brush. I mean, usually for me nowadays, I don't want to buy something if I don't think it has high quality craftsmanship. So, I mean this honestly. 
as much as I love badger brushes, um, I've kind of gotten over a superior, thinking that they're superior to boar, horse, synthetic. Um, the one caveat to that is I do think that the way that the water gets kind of held in synthetic brushes, it's not that synthetic brushes don't hold water. I mean, I think for many years we've always done this. Is we dip the brush and then we pull it out and then a bunch of water falls out and we say, see, it doesn't hold water. Well, it may let go of that water, but there's still residual water being held. So I kind of don't always know how accurate of a metric that is. But, you know, even if you shake out most of the water in a badger brush and then you go to load, after a certain amount of time that that lather while you're where you're working it, the water that's in the base of the knot, before you go to dip the tips, it will slowly incorporate into your lather. And so that's always kind of been my favorite thing is, is someone that face lathers. Um, I feel like the, the process um, is a little more zen-like because it's naturally kind of already there. So if you just kind of keep working the lather and you get just a little bit more aggressive, let's say like with the paint strokes um, on a badger brush, you can, um, you can incorporate it a little bit quicker. Whereas like when you guys see me using the synthetic brush, I feel like I'm always going to dip the tips in the water work, dip the tips. So it just seems like as much as I love the product that the synthetic brush gives, it just takes longer. Um, and it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, it is what it is for me. So, um, I always like being able to share with you guys again, like how does something work, at least in my opinion, and, and what are the things that, that I like, or how would I like something to work? So in my shave, it doesn't bother me if I'm using the Plisson synthetic or a a badger, you know, made from Plisson. Um, for me, I just want the, the lather to um, turn out as smooth as possible. I want the brush to be able to offer um, enough softness so that if I choose to lather for an extended period of time, it doesn't give me brush burn. Again, I don't know if that's the case here, but I think we're gonna be okay. My skin's probably gonna feel a little raw for maybe two, three hours, but um, anyway, I thought it was a great shave. Um, so the BBS one, I'll try to shoot to use this um, same razor during the next uh, next shave, and um, I don't know. Maybe we'll wait to use this just a little bit, a little bit later. Um, I know some of you guys want to see this used again, so maybe we'll use this in one of the shaves coming up later this week. So anyway. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, you know, real quick, I was chatting with Ollie earlier. The timber blade, like I said, it's very close. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get nicked, but I think this has more to do with, I don't know, I didn't shave right out of the shower today, you guys, so maybe that could be another thing. Although I will tell you guys, based on everything that changed last year, Maybe I'm not as convinced as I used to be that I have to shave right out of the shower and maybe I don't need as much pre-shave as I used to think. So um, I've really tried to simplify kind of what I use in my shave and not feeling like you need to have every single bell and whistle. I mean, I remember when I first started, people are always about, you, know, you got to have hot towels, you got to let the face soak, and you got to use the hottest water possible. I don't, at least for me, you guys, I'll, I'll use my, uh, my water that, you know, the brush is soaking in 90 to a hundred degrees, so closer to being like you know, warm, not really hot. And I don't have any issues. Does it feel as luxurious? No, maybe not. But, um, I will say that I do think that like doing a cold water shave, it definitely doesn't feel quite as, quite as good, but I do think if I were to show you guys, um, maybe some some cold water shaves, I'd probably get some pretty favorable results. So um, anyway, I'm gonna let you guys go. Hope you guys have a great day. If you're getting a shave in sometime soon, have a great shave. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.